Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with your co-host, the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice, and his wife, Jeannie. Michael and Jeannie share with you the wisdom of the ancient Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. They offer tools and support five days a week. They will support you in building a solid foundation within yourself to live in pure love. In Aramaic, Rachma. Michael is the author of So Why Is This Happening to Me Again? For more information on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. And now your co-host, The Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael and Jeannie Rice. To the brightness within you and the truth that Hi, and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice. Today is our Memorial Day celebration 332. We welcome you to the show. Our call in number is 646 200 4169. We'd love to hear your comments and your questions. We do already have someone with their hand up, but first let's welcome Michael to the show. Hey, sweetie. Welcome, everybody, to the show. We're delighted that you're with us and honored to have the opportunity to support you and to uh, learn ourselves this ancient, awesome Aramaic process of forgiveness. We have a, uh, a tradition, a complete tradition of inviting everyone to become part of the team that changed the world, and that is the team that eradicated war from planet Earth. How do we do that? Well, the first step in the process is to recognize that every time, and that doesn't just mean sometimes, but every time you've had some form of hostile or fearful response, it's about something going on inside of you. It's not about anybody else but you. And when you recognize that, then if you choose to enter into the process of forgiveness, there are like two roads you can go when there's some form of hostility or fear. One road is you can start to talk about somebody else and what they do. And by so doing, you disable your ability to heal that part of your own mind. The other road you can go is enter into a conversation about yourself. Gee, I have this going on, and then pick up a worksheet. Now, what is a worksheet? If you don't know what the reality management forgiveness worksheet process is, please go to www.whyagain.com. And on the right-hand side, you'll see a link that says Download Worksheets. If you would click on that link, the first seven links under that section will give you the whole story, including three or maybe it's four different radio shows now where we've walked somebody totally through the whole forgiveness process, step-by-step, so you've got total verbal instructions. And the instructions are simple and easy to follow. Now, sometimes complexity will come up in your mind and you'll think it's got something to do with the worksheet. Just like the last time you had hostility or fear, you thought it was about somebody else and entered into a conversation about them. But the complexity comes from the content of the mind. And so as we choose to forgive, as we choose to remove the hostility, the fear, the pain, the sadness, the grief, the complexity, the loss, what shows up in our physiology is our human lives. And it's always so awesome when a human life enters a room. It is always just so awesome because what shows up is the active presence of love, and that active presence of love tends to start to shift and change absolutely everything. So we're here to support you in making those shifts and changes. And so, Jeannie, you've got a caller for us. Let's hear from our caller. We actually have two callers. The first one is area code awesome. 517. You're on the air. Hi, Michael and Jeannie. This is Leah from Lansing. How are you? Hey, we're blessed, Leah. Welcome. How are you? Thank you. Uh, I am triggered, <laughs> honestly. Um, so I am having an issue with a friend of mine, and I was hoping to get some advice from you. 
Well, we'll do the best we can do to support you. And, uh, of course, when your mind tells you I have an issue with a friend, what it's really saying is I have an issue I'm in denial about, and I really know I need to look inside myself to see what it's really about. Exactly. So I'm having a <laughs> difficult time, I think, figuring out exactly I what it's you. really I about. I'm feeling overwhelmed by the number of things that are coming to me. So this right. person and I have been friends for years. And in the last right. six months or so, I, I perceived that she has really backed off in our friendship to the point where I don't really even know if we are friends anymore. Uh -huh. um, so I, yesterday, we also work in the same, same company. Um, and yesterday right. she came in to talk to a friend of ours a mutual friend, and she didn't even say hello to me. So I asked that mutual friend, you know, am I good in actuality check? Am I making this up or, you know, is there something weird here? And um, anyway, she told the other friend that I was concerned, and she sent me an email today and said, let's talk. And I've done half a dozen worksheets on it, and I feel, you know, I think I've overcome – my initial anger about it, but I definitely still have a lot of sadness and I'm having a lot of anxiety about this meeting. And I want to come right. from a space of love, but mm -hmm. I'm not really sure that I can do that because I feel too afraid <laughs> and sad right now. Mm. And her I inner email... Are you breathing? No, I'm not breathing. <laughs> okay, really so the sad. first step is going to be to take a breath. Okay. Yep. As, as long, you know, the way that, that things like hostility and fear build up is to hold your breath, and that's what allows that energy to build. And if you keep breathing, it's really hard for those things to build up and uh, get to the point where they take over your mind. And so just be conscious of your breath and let your breath flow as you talk about this friend and and what's going on for you around, it sounds like, loss and sadness. And, and it maybe loss and sadness over something that never happened. And that's why I want to make sure I go into this meeting. It's not, it's not a meeting. It's talk right. from a more loving space because if I go in expecting it to be <laughs> that something happened, right. I feel like I'm creating it. But in her email, she said, I don't hate you. And with regulatory speech, now I feel like she's telling me she hates me. Well, of course, you know, recognize now, be, be careful that you don't make yourself so important that you think she bases what she does just for you. If, yeah. if she has hatred, if she has hatred and her hatred is triggered, then you being the person who perhaps triggered that hatred for her might be the very person and usually is the person with the antidote to that hatred if you can stay connected to a space of love. And that's one of the gifts that we give each other as friends. When we we see that we've triggered each other, if each one in the situation can hold that space. So in the Healing Through Relationships workshop, we go through a demonstration where we show, you know, people with their bags of garbage. And person one has problem one, let's say it's hatred, uh, and person two has problem two, which is usually the matching bag of garbage, and it sounds like it fits perfectly for you too, and that is, and yours is fear. And so what tends to happen is the person with the hatred points at the person with the fear and says, you, you know, I really hate you, and what they're, what they're saying is, I want you to go inside of me and fix my hatred, and the person who has fear of what's going on for someone else is in essence saying, and I want you to go inside of me and fix my fear. The beauty is that that relationship is perfect matching bags of garbage, which is perfect opportunity to heal. And if you go in, and you might want to go to the website and uh, download the Responsibility Communication Worksheet mm -hmm. and spend some time with that. There is a, a DVD of communication. Did you hear what I think I said? And a CD, but... You might want to uh, download that worksheet. It's under the download worksheet section. And as you take responsibility and go, you know, there's a part of me that's just terrified to, to speak with you because I don't know what's happened. I feel like our relationship is lost. I have some grief. Then 
it's going to give the space to her to be able to say, hmm, I'm not being blamed for what's going on inside of you. You're actually being responsible. Well, let me see. How can I support you? And, you know, if she doesn't have the awareness if what's up for her is hatred and she's not conscious of it and it sounds like she's perhaps in denial of it, then creating the space of support and that that presence of love is what will tend to antidote both the hatred and the fear. And as you build together, you build a stronger friendship. You know, friendships grow stronger and deeper because of conflict healed rather than because we never had a conflict. So as as you are aware, as you have the tools and have the awareness, you'll be the person to take the lead here. And if she's got hatred that's that there's in there's some denial of, and it sounds like very likely there is, you'll want to be aware that usually when that kind of energy is going on, there's a drug that most people use, and that's hostility. And so you'll want to be aware that if in your conversation she goes into hostility, you can stay conscious and recognize that she's simply trying to cover her pain rather than matching and trying to cover your pain. And as you speak about what's going on for you, you know, instead of your conversation being about her, so it might look like, well, you know, over the last six months, it feels like our relationship has drifted farther and farther apart from where I sit. Uh, Last week I was in the office and you came in and spoke with someone else and we had no conversation. And, And, of course, by the way, you might notice while she didn't come over and say hello to you, you didn't go over and say hello to her. That's kind of a two way street. And she may have walked out of the office thinking the same way as you as, gee, I wonder why she didn't come over and say hello. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I, I don't think she's coming from a hostile place, or at right. least not an outwardly one, because in her email she actually said, she said that I know our relationship has changed and it's my fault. I'd like an opportunity to explain. Mm. And I, I emailed her back and I said, you know, I'm glad that you want to talk. I don't hold you responsible for my feelings. If I'm feeling sad, that's my responsibility. It's not, right. you know, you're not in control of my feelings. Yeah. This is a perfect place to uh, to up your friendship a whole notch. She's, in, she's willing to take, yeah, good breath. That's the kind that lets go. Good breath. So it sounds like it's her opportunity to uh, be responsible for what she's feeling and what's going on with her in terms of the relationship change and yours to be responsible for your fear and your grief and your loss. And as you let go of that, I suspect what you're going to find, especially if you can follow the responsibility communication steps, uh, what you're going to find is that your relationship is just going to have a whole new upgrade and install in your operating system and hers. (laughs) Okay. So that's what I hear in it, and, uh, of course, we hold the space and uh, are there to support you in any way we can. Uh, it might be worthwhile if you if you jump online and download that worksheet, or I don't know if you, if you have the uh, video of communication, did you hear what I think I said, but it might be worth, before you actually have that meeting, getting a copy of the uh, responsibility communication steps, which is a seven-step process, and just write uh, a letter to her, an email, with what's going on for you and using those steps. That will create a foundation and a model for her to perhaps follow to come back into communication with you with. And and as she processes through what she needs to process through and you through what you need to process through, your joining will take you both to a higher level. Okay. Yeah, I I have the CD that I'll download the worksheet. Okay, Maybe I'll so try you got to listen to that again if I have time. Um, I have the CD, the audio CD. Okay. Well, on that one, the last hour is where the uh, communication steps are. So you might want to just jump on that and give a listen to it and, and know that okay. we hold the space. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Very cool. That's a lot. We hold it, hold it in a blessing. You as well. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Awesome. Well, you know, it's it's interesting. With uh, The workshop we do called Healing Through Relationships is not called Healing Your Relationships, but through, and it's through the interactions when we choose to take responsibility and have conversations about ourselves rather than others. 
that we get to look at the deeper dynamics that, you know, perhaps have been hidden in our bloodlines for a thousand generations. And uh, being the first one to dig it up, being the first one conscious enough and to have the tools with which to dig those things up, it's a big responsibility. It's a, uh, it's a big uh, step to change the family dynamic from the unconsciousness of, of projection communication to the conscious awareness of responsibility communication. And so that's awesome. We hold the space. Jeannie, you got another caller? A lot. Well, um, we actually have three more callers, but along those same lines, there's a conversation been in the chat room, and um, White Lily wanted to know why people who are her spiritual teachers do things to hurt her, like not replying to an email that they write. Um, do they think that it's okay just to ignore them? And then she has anger and resentment towards them, and she's just supposed to forgive them. And so we had this conversation about how forgiveness is a different meaning. There was actually five shows out there under download worksheets that um, go through different um, people, different scenarios of doing the worksheet. But if you could give a brief explanation of the difference in forgiveness, and I put a little bit of the explanation out in the, in the chat room, but for those who may be new that are listening. Cool. Awesome. Well, the first thing I'd offer is when you say that she hurt you, why did these people hurt you? My first thought is that she didn't hurt you. She just didn't reply to an email. You know, that's all that happened. The fact is, the actuality is, she didn't reply to an email. Now, of course, you and I don't know why she didn't reply to the email. It might be because she never got the email. It might be because it went into her spam box. It might be because she's as enraged as the most rageful person on the planet. But the fact that she didn't reply to an email, if it was any or all of those reasons, has nothing to do with your hurt. Notice that before you even knew this person, you knew intimately this quality of hurt that you're experiencing. Her non-replying to an email does not hurt you. The simple fact is it's just not replying to an email. Now, if that triggers hurt in you, then I could imagine that your forgiveness work will be around being dissed, being ignored, not being respected, not being honored, uh, not being communicated with. And so they would be the worksheets we'd suggest you do. Now, I will suggest that you never, ever in the next million years forgive her for hurting you. There are a couple of reasons for that. One, she didn't hurt you. Her not replying may have triggered hurt, but that's all your stuff. That's got nothing to do with her. Your hurt is yours, and forgiveness doesn't have to do with letting her off the hook for triggering it. So the, the Greek world has given us a totally, completely fraudulent explanation of forgiveness that keeps us going in circles of trauma. And that is they've played it out this way. You, terrible person, didn't reply to my email. Therefore, you caused all this hurt that I'm experiencing inside of me, but it's okay, I'll forgive you. I'll let you off the hook. And of course, by doing that, you've done nothing to address the hurt that's inside of you. Now, here's what I'm going to invite you to do. Go to www.whyagain.com, and on the right-hand side, there's a link about six links down that says Download Worksheets. Under that link, there are seven different links. Well, there are dozens of links, but the first seven links will give you a whole set of tools for how to go inside yourself and remove all hurt. And what that would mean, once you've removed all hurt, is you could send out 100 emails to 100 of your absolute best friends and have every one of them send back a reply that says, I don't ever want to talk to you again. And you know what? You would have no hurt over that. The only reason you hurt is because there's a reality in you called hurt. And circumstances and situations and people that trigger it do not need forgiveness, you do. And your forgiveness will be when you delve inside of your own structure and remove your very capacity to be hurt. So that's my invitation for you. That's my support for you and my input. And, uh, and then you may find uh, where your mind conjures up out of its hurt part, out of its part that's been 
ignored or dissed or whatever. I don't know exactly that dynamic. We haven't had enough conversation to know that. If you want to call in, I'd be happy to support you and see if we could reach uh, what that is. But, but your forgiveness will be about removing literally your very capacity to be hurt so that anybody and everybody could never speak to you again. And you go, oh, you're not speaking. Oh, okay. Well, gee, looks like maybe you're in some pain over that not speaking. Can I support you? Rather than, oh, my God, that hurts me so much. Nothing outside of you can hurt you. But if you hold it inside of you, I promise there will be a whole procession of people coming to share space with you who will, in your mind, be the cause of your hurt. And as I say, if you'd like to call, our call-in number is 646-200-4169. We'd be delighted to discuss it with you further and just be of support. And, you know, it's time for us as humans to, to get to the point. There's a, there's a great line in, the, if I remember correctly, it's in the Book of Thomas, one of the books that didn't get into the scriptures. And Yeshua was talking to the disciples, and he says, you know, you like a bunch of little kids running around in the square. Nah, 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 look what you did to me. Nobody can make you feel anything that isn't inside of you. And if they can resonate what's inside of you, and you don't know it's yours, they've given you the gift of the opportunity to remove that, the opportunity to learn forgiveness. And that's what we're here to support, so that we can put an end to this game of pointing the finger at somebody else and look what they did to me and Each of us actually grow into adulthood where we're responsible for what we're experiencing. So, Jeannie, you've got another caller or something else in the chat room? We do have another caller in the chat room. So, thank you. Um, Awesome. Glad to be on the team. Yeah. Erica 517, you're on the air. Who do we have? Uh, That would be me, Rex. Hi, Rex. Hey there, me, Rex. Hey, how's everybody doing? Rex, I've never heard of me, Rex. (laughs) I said... Mirex, yeah, it's a new new label. Uh, I, I uh, wanted to mention our support group tonight. And awesome, Lance in Michigan. Yes, uh, and we're excited about supporting everyone and you know, continuing the work and unfolding the process of the true Aramaic understanding of forgiveness. So we're all awesome. about that. And I wanted to thank you again. Yesterday was a very powerful day. It has been for. A couple of weeks now, I've been really processing a lot of information and uh, becoming more aware of different patterns that I have in me and, and deeper levels. As you mentioned, uh, when we tap into that level of grief and uh, loss, it's it's a big one. So I've been doing a lot of work with that, and really appreciate all the support. And I got an email from a from a person who was listening to the program and said it was really helpful, and that's my intention. And and I appreciate Leah getting on the program and talking about what's happening with her because the more of us that can hear the the process, you know, hear the experience of being supported and uh, getting through our stuff and and just, it's exciting. So I'm, uh, again, excited and I appreciate everyone and I wanted to mention the support group and also the, uh, we're having the Mind Shifters and uh, uh, Still Point Breathing Workshop this Saturday. Great. So I know you you have other callers. People, people yeah. can go to stillpointbreathoflife.com to get uh, details on where the support group will be tonight and the Mind Shifters and Still Point Breathing Workshop this weekend. Yes, it is. On Saturday, it will be in East Lansing, and they can get that information oh. from the website as well. Very cool. So awesome, thank Rex. you, thank you, thank you. And uh, it's, I, I also uh, – it's really exciting because I did a talk last night as well to a group who had invited me to just come and share with them. They're a support group, not directly related to this work, and I'd only met one or two of the people before. And there was 13 people there, and just there was just tremendous flow. Uh, we had a couple people that went into a, just a full-blown healing process and unfolded some things that they didn't even know were there and just, it's just exciting, and I'm, I'm I'm sharing this because, boy, I'll tell you, we don't have to stay stuck in our stuff. I mean, we really can move through it and get out there and and share, you know, and and be the and be the loving beings that we are. So, you know, I just those are the things I wanted to to, to say just now, and uh, love to everyone and everything. Enjoy. Okay, thanks, thanks Mike. Right. Um, tell Mitzi we said hi and send our blessings. Take care. Bye bye. Absolutely. Bye. 
area code 813. You're on the air. Hello, Michael? Hey, this is Michael and Jeannie. Who's calling? Hi, this is Linda. I just well, hey there, young lady. Nine. How are you? Very intensive. I'm doing wonderful. Yes? Awesome. Um, my whole world has changed. Since being Your there. world has changed. How did that yeah. happen? What happened? Well, I think I maybe um, was projecting things onto other people that were in my own fear in my mind. Uh-huh. So, right. Um, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm seeing the real person there. So, and, and what the, what do they look like? What do they look like without your projections? Oh, they're kind and loving, and and they're doing things for me. They're, while I was away, they planted a beautiful flower garden for me, and uh, awesome. I just, you know, I'm just amazed, and really, it's wonderful. And I was not worried, but I was sort of wondering, you know, how will I know what my purpose in life is, and how do I know what to do every day? And uh, I know my primary purpose is uh, to be uh, the precious, um, conscious, active presence of love, like mm. as, as a newborn uh, baby. But there you I go. also have yeah. a secondary purpose, um, which is unfolding to me every day by only, you know, asking for God to guide me. I um, Every day somebody comes to me and asks for my assistance, and I don't even have to, you know, look for them. So it's wonderful. I just have to keep, you know, keep going out and meeting people and not staying isolated in my house. And everything's just going that, along. And now, was that your habit? Was that your What's habit that? before the intensive before the intensive last week to stay isolated in your house? I was um, into the computer games, Facebook computer games, and I'd uh, be so on the computer the most of the day and late at night. Uh-huh. So I was running away from myself. I didn't have to think. I didn't have right. to feel. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm, it's amazing I'm, how many people use computers to just totally, completely avoid right. their lives. Since I've been home, we haven't looked on our computers, me and my roommate. We haven't just watched the TV. We're not watching the news anymore. It's just like she's just changing with me. Mm-hmm. And so is there anything now, particular that happened in the intensive for you that uh, that you might share that was inspiring for you that or that uh, really created that kind of a shift? I mean, that's a pretty monumental shift you've made. Oh, yeah. Um well, besides of which I'd been yearning for it all my life, and, you know, that was pretty much what I wanted since I was small, to be with God and near God and to help God. So I always had that yearning, but I just didn't. I had to keep going down different paths to find it. Um, well, the only thing that happened was, you know, I learned how to breathe, which I had been holding my breath mostly, and by the time I'd come there, I... It was pretty much choking all the time, like I was coughing all the time, and I couldn't catch my breath. So by learning to do, to breathe and to be in the presence of God, um, I felt myself transported in my mind to a beautiful garden, and there were I heard a bird singing, and I smelled a, a smell of clothes, and I felt like I was in the presence of God, and just a beautiful garden and I was a child and I was just dancing around and spinning around and laughing and it sounded just like the voice mm. of a child and it was so wonderful I just started to smile and then I started laughing and, and it was just the child laughing and it was like I found myself you know when I was innocent back in my childhood before all this bag of garbage came on to me and weighted me down awesome. so it's just wonderful and now today we got a call and there's a child who has been told he's dying from a heart condition, and um, he's, I think he's 22, but he's very childlike. And uh, they said there's nothing to do, he's going to die, you know, soon. So he's coming to, to live with us from uh, Manassas, Virginia, and uh-huh. he's going to be here 
staying with us. And uh, so that's wonderful. It's uh, it's wonderful. Well, question. You uh, you cleared out your heart palpitations last week. You went through two or three layers of that and just said yeah. goodbye to them. So having healed that part of your heart, you may just be the space in which this young man will clean up his whole heart problem. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. And also awesome. I've been having, every morning at dawn, I've been having the presence of God come upon me and, and do some further healing on me. So it's been really awesome. <laughs> Fabulous. I feel well, joy, and of I feel love, happiness, yeah. Yeah, when you recognize that, you know, the energetic pattern in which we live, move, and have our being is the active presence of love, and that's the stuff we're made of, and we tune into it, that becomes that becomes the game. And, of course, the world's specialty is to keep us tuned into its hostilities and fears. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Linda, you did such a monumental piece of work last week in that intensive, in nine days. Rarely have I seen somebody who has made that much movement in nine days from where you started. And so you are to be acknowledged and congratulated, and uh, I I really support you staying in that connected space so that each morning that presence of love is in you, moving Mm -hmm. and cleaning up and clearing out every layer that needs to clear out so that the awesome being you are shows up totally, completely in the world. It's just just a fabulous piece of work. Congratulations. And, and you know, it's it's when you get down to it, it's really pretty simple, isn't it, Linda? Yes, it's funny sometimes when you think about it. It's so easy. It is but so. Of course, it, if you've got it hard, hard, but I would make it hold hard. my fear so tight, you know. I finally let well, it go. Well, if, if you think about that fear, if you tap into that fear, uh, if, if let's say we had a scale from 1 to 100, when you arrived at the intensive, and that would have been now uh, 12 days ago, right. on a scale of 1 to 100, what would have been your level of fear? 10. On a scale of 1 to 100, it would have been a 10? Oh, 100? No, it would have been close to 100, I think. 100. And how yeah. long had you been hanging out? How long had you been hanging out with that uh, level 100 fear in your life? Oh, uh, it's been a long time, like been somewhere in my childhood, I think. Or so three or four decades. Yeah, yeah. So three or four decades, level 100 fear, and in nine days, and you went home, and I, I know you called Jeannie so excited, telling her <laughs> that, oh, my God, the sky is, the, the clouds are 3D. I've never seen that before. And, you know, there's there's an interesting video uh, that you can Google and look at. It's uh, it's called Killer Stress and yeah. how stress affects perception and the way we see. Even even as you as you were able to experience after you left the intensive, clouds are 3D and and yeah. and everything is awesome and shining. Uh, and yeah. that's not available when we're locked into that pain. No. So not. now here you are 12 days later, and, I mean, you dug in and did your work, but in 12 days, going from three or four decades of level 100 fear, what would you say your level of fear is at this point on a scale of 100? Well, I should say zero, but maybe I shouldn't at this point. I don't know what. what hey, go I for zero say. if that's what's there. I mean, that doesn't mean there won't be other layers come up, but you know how to okay. handle it now. And, okay, well, and, I'd say zero you, then, yeah. But I know yeah. that every day I'm working on it to yeah. not let any uh, more fear come in. Forgive my fear. What do you, uh, okay, forgive your fear. There you go. Awesome. If it comes up, just pop it out of there. Right. And, and I, I ask you this uh, because everybody who's on the show, you know, especially if they're new folks who are like, well, gee, how do you do this? Does this really work? Yeah. I mean, it seriously works, doesn't it? <laughs> it works if you want it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, good for you, Linda. You're you are to be congratulated for the willingness you had and the hmm. huge chunk of work you took on in that nine days and that short intensive. Thank that you, was Michael. fabulous. And I I was given a gift too. I got to hold a newborn baby yesterday. Oh, it was wonderful. Awesome. I just had very to go. cool. Yeah. It was Miraculous. So you were just walking down the street and there was somebody with a newborn for you to hold? No, I went I went to my friends and 
you have to go up on this balcony for the second floor, and at the top of the stairs, there was a man and a lady holding a newborn baby. A lady was. And I said, can I hold your baby? And she said, sure. And I just held the oh, baby oh. And, and looked in its eyes and rocked it, and it was wonderful. So ah, talk about I reinforcement. Ask, every, everything I ask for, I get. It's wonderful. <laughs> That's so cool. Well, it's just fabulous. And, you know, that, uh, you know, with the fact that throughout the intensive, we keep reminding everybody, you know, just hold a newborn. You know what human life is to you just two days after just happen to be walking up some steps and have somebody who's willing to have you hold a newborn. That's pretty fabulous. He's creating, lady. It's wonderful. Lovely. Thank you so much, Michael, for putting me on the right path. All right. Glad to be on the team, Linda. You hold a blessing. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow. Awesome. Very, very cool. So, Jeannie, do you have another caller for us? There's not another caller, but um, I did just get well, a couple things in the chat room. They're talking about, oh, I love babies and their blessing, and, and they represent happiness and new beginnings. And I was just getting ready to say the baby is the expression of who we each are, it's their very being, because they just are. And, uh, but anyway, I do have another caller, but I wanted to also share, I just got an email from someone who said, um, get it back up here, that they had been struggling over how to make an intensive that they had committed to this summer, and instead of being open and trusting that they had been avoiding getting in contact with us, and so that they really needed to... Uh, to talk with us, so it's it's kind of you know interesting how people do different things to avoid facing what's up for them. But yeah, kind of yeah. And you know, before we go on to other caller, yeah, you know, before we go on to other caller, I just want to throw in one more key thought in the whole process, and that is that you know, as as people hold the newborn and realize what human life is. It doesn't matter what's happened in your world. It doesn't matter what happened to you. It doesn't matter what you did. None of that can touch who you are in your essence. You know, as Linda just shared with us, basically her whole life since childhood has been lived in fear and terror, heart palpitations, um, anxiety about going outdoors, staying indoors, avoiding, uh, has been, you know, basically her life. And when she was willing to drop her commitment to all of that brokenness and tap into who she was, the the human life that we are is still fully intact, fully available, fully joyful, and all we have to do is make a space for it to come in. So that's what this work is about, making a space for that awesome presence of love to come in. So you've got another call, Jeannie? Yes, I think. Um, I was just going to say, though, I thought it was kind of uh, ironic that, you know, the person in the chat room was talking about someone not responding to their email, and then we get this email from someone who they actually said, you know, I've not been answering you because I've been trying to avoid facing what's up for me, and and my way of of avoiding it was to not answer you. (laughs) Anyway, that was kind of ironic, I thought. Uh, A listener in the chat room wanted to know about the Ozarks, and a link to the center and information about what we do there. So I was giving her the website, and uh, so you might want to mention quickly before we take the other caller what will be happening at Heartland in July. Right. Well, we are uh, going to be starting a uh, an intensive program in July, and on July the 12th we're actually going to do a, a pre-intensive. Each year we have a kind of a work project that we do. And uh, this year it will be 10 days long, and it's going to be called Food, Fun, Work, and Forgiveness. So we're going to be doing a whole series of things over a period of 10 days from the – let me just look at the calendar here. I've got it in front of me. It will start on the 12th of July and go through the 21st. And Chef Ari will be joining us for that. And he'll be bringing some new recipes. We'll be doing cooked as well as 
raw food recipes during that uh, 10 days. We'll be doing some work projects on the property with, uh, with you know, getting ready for the intensive season. It's an economy program, and it will start on the 12th of July and the 10 days for everything, food, uh, accommodations, workshop, workshop materials, and the food will be awesome with Ari uh, setting it up and preparing it and showing us how to do it. He's going to be doing uh, some cooking uh, and, and uncooking lessons. So that will be the starting point, and the whole 10 days will be $750 for everything. And then we'll move into a nine-day Why Is This Happening to Me Again intensive. That will start on the uh, 23rd. So we'll finish this on the 21st. We'll have a day off. And then on the 23rd, we'll begin a nine-day Why Is This Happening to Me Again intensive. Uh, And then we'll go into a nine-day teacher training that will start on July the 31st and go through August the 8th for anybody that's interested in uh, in learning to teach this work or take it to the next level. And I'm actually working on uh, putting out a flyer, uh, a, a special for people who want to do teacher's training and who've already done a nine-day Why Is This Happening to Me Again intensive and would like to do the food, and that is uh, for anybody who wants to uh, come and do the food program. And if you've already done a nine-day Why Is This Happening to Me Again intensive, what we're going to do is uh, and, and you want to register for teacher training, is we're going to actually offer a special where you can register for the nine-day Y. You can repeat the Y intensive, and each intensive takes things to a whole other level, and that nine days will be 575 instead of 1575. So if you do the uh, Food, Work, Fun, and Forgiveness program, and you've already completed the nine-day Y, is this happening to me again intensive, Instead of being 1575, the registration for the nine-day Y intensive will be 575, and then the teachers' training will follow up right after that. So that would be, uh, you know, gee, what's that? Almost 30 days uh, right there at Heartland. So anybody who wants to do that could give us a shout, and uh, we'll we'll set that up. We're also, if there's someone who uh, who has done a nine-day intensive but isn't wanting to do teacher training. I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, but we're going to offer a special price for a repeat of that nine-day Y intensive. So anyway, give us a shout if you're interested in doing that. We'd be delighted to support you, and uh, we're moving forward with our summer plans, and all things are just on go. So you've got a caller for us, sweetie? We do. Area code 607 here on the air. Hi, it's Richard. How are you guys doing? Couldn't quite understand you. Say it again. It's Richard. How are you doing? Oh, hey, Richard. I'm doing well, sir. How are you? Great. Hey, I just wanted to comment uh, one thing. Uh, when when uh, Jeannie was talking, I had a hard time understanding what she was saying. I don't know whether she wasn't speaking into the phone directly or, or what, but I, I really had a hard time understanding her. But that, I just wanted to put that out there so she can maybe correct that. Well, thank you for letting us know. The main reason I'm calling, though, is I just wanted to uh, uh, share that it's great to have people call in and share their concerns and their, their, their problems because just listening to what's happening for people that may, it brings up stuff for people that are listening. And, you know, so it's really helpful in that sense that it allows other people to heal as well. Absolutely. It is a blessing, isn't it? Yes, it is. So that was my, what I wanted to share was to encourage people to call in with their their, their issues so that uh, not only they get served, but other people as well. Very cool. And, and where, are you in California yet? I know you're driving across uh, the country. I'm about 119 miles from uh, the California border, on the Interstate oh, 80, cool. heading towards Reno. So, Very cool. Uh, yeah, I'll be there. I'll be at my destination later this evening. So that's, 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 yeah. Fabulous. Um, All right. Well, I'm I'm working on uh, acquiring a uh, a basket uh, to pick up that distiller on the way to Heartland this summer, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you before too long. Okay. And. Uh, okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. So, Jeannie, anything else happening in the chat room? 
Any other callers? Um, no, I don't. I guess the headset, I've taken it off. So thank you, Richard, for letting me know about that. Um, I need to get it as opposed for my phone. But there's no other callers with their hands up. We've got 13 minutes left, so 646-200-4169 and press 1. That puts you in queue to talk to Michael. Uh, there are no other um, specific questions in the chat room. Someone had asked where they could tap into support groups, and so I sent them to buyagain.com, and down on the right-hand side it says support groups, and there that is locations for support groups as well as information about starting your own support group. And so we're totally open to help someone if they, you know, are interested in starting a support group in their area. And we have Sarah has just tapped in on the phone. Um, music on. Sarah from uh, Fort Lodge. Hi, how are you Fort doing? Nine five four. You're on the air. Well, hi, Sarah Michael and Jeannie. It's been a while since and we've heard your sweet voice. Thank you, my friend. I have I have some fun news for you. Um, Almost. I remember, I started listening to your broadcast back in January. I think I started taking notes on January 18th. And um, I have a running document here on the computer of notes. So anyway, on the 30th of January, somebody on your show started talking about uh, the Emmaus Walk. Right. And I had never heard of it before. But, uh, you know, Jeannie filled me in on some notes from the chat room, so I was able to look it up. And anyway, Emmaus Walk, great. Didn't hear anything more about it until about two weeks ago, the the weekend after Easter, okay, one of the singers at the Jesu Catholic Church where I work as an organist um, in right. Miami, the old Jesuit church in downtown Miami, I've been there for six and a half years, when we right. have a couple of cantors that come for the first Spanish, first English and Spanish Mass, so the, the gentleman that's right. into the Spanish Mass, he brought a piece called a Spanish piece and it the Pereg- El Peregrino de Emmaus meaning the traveler of Emmaus and right. I said the travel em- Peregrino de Emmaus oh, cool. you mean Emmaus walk wow yeah. so yeah. it's a Spanish piece right but it's all in Spanish so anyway he's been doing the piece for the 10 o'clock right. Spanish mass well this last weekend we had a, a different guest priest, and I was listening to his sermon from the back. When I go on my break, I could hear him, and he kept saying, and his, this is the 1 o'clock Spanish Mass, and he kept talking about peregrino de Amaus, peregrino de Amaus. So, oh, in mm-hmm. his sermon, he's using this topic. I, I'm going to sing right. the song for communion. So I did. Now, by sing, I mean I'm playing the organ and singing. Okay, so right. while the Mass is in progress, right, and he's like, we're going through the Holy Holy and all this stuff, I'm like rehearsing the music mentally, to, you know, for the words, because I've had a lot <laughs> right. of words, and a lot of words I didn't know. This is not one of our, you know, common hymns in the book that I'm very familiar with, and, of course, part of the joy of working there is that I get to learn more Spanish. That's probably right. been one right. of the reasons I hang out there is that I'm continuing to learn more Spanish every time, and there's constantly, you know, connections with Europe and, like, Argentina and South America that come through there. Right. So, um, I, you know, every time I thought I was going to leave, no, 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 you're staying because because of some of these other benefits. And um, anyway, I got to sing the song, Peregrino de Emos. And so I, I right. tied down the priest and said, listen, you've got to tell me, what is the tradition on this? And he said, well, there's there's a Spanish, it's held in Miami, the Catholic Church held, holds it in Miami something like four times a year in different parishes, okay? This is the, right. the Roman Catholic version of it. So right, it goes right. around to different parishes, they do a Spanish version or an English, you can sign up for either Spanish or English, and there's also, it's male or female. So right. that, that's how it's practiced by the Catholic Church. And I'm going, hmm, I think my friends were talking maybe about a different group of people that also do a, quote, unquote, MAS walk. But anyway, there you go. Yeah, there are many different, I think the Presbyterians do one. There are many different uh, groups that do the MAS walk. So that's pretty cool that all that happened to fall in place. Yeah. Just, so I 
I had to let you know. So a little bit of good news, of, you know, coming my way because of, you know, being having associating with you, you know, internet friends here, your spirituality friends. That's very nice. Anyway, so cool. yeah, awesome. thank, yeah. So very anyway, cool. thank you. And, right, I know you. If there's anybody else who wants to talk, I'll get off the phone. But uh, thank you so much. Awesome. Well, have a blessed one then. Thank you, Michael. See you soon. Ciao. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, Jeannie, anybody else on the line? No. I think that that's Hello, all Jeannie. The Did we lose so you? Yeah, I'm here. Can you not hear me? I can, yes. Hello. Do you, do you have me on, Jeannie? I do. Well, Say it again. Is that Dr. Is that David? Tim is on? Tim. No, oh, hey Dr. there, Dr. Tim. Tim. Since there's How are you? Minutes, I'm fine, thanks. A few minutes I thought I'd just give a quick report on our support group last night. We watched the first oh, half awesome. of Healing Through Relationships. We had five people in the group and some people doing worksheets for the first or second time and some nice discussion and shifting happened. The 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 bulk of last night's um, group process was people inadvertently giving testimonials about how much has shifted for them in the past year or two. Right. And it happened twice that as people were talking, they started saying, well, the old me would have and so somebody interrupted right. and said, what do you mean the old you? <laughs> and <laughs> and it dawned on them that what they were referring to was before they started coming to this support group, they would have right. responded to a situation with, um, you know, full-blown ego and anger and self-justification and shutting down or attacking the other person and – now after, you know, six months or a year or two years of meeting in the group and doing the worksheet process, they feel like there's a whole different them as a person, a whole different pattern of responding. And they've come to think of it in their own head as the old me versus the new me. Right. And that Very happened, cool. That happened for two different people, so I thought I would mention that. As... Yeah, that's fun. Well, you know, with what Linda, I don't know, were you on the line when Linda just shared what happened for her? Yes. That was just awesome. And actually, I just got a text from Beth. Beth is a, a lady who was at the uh, the nine-day intensive last week in Palm Coast, too. And I had just talked with her just a few minutes before the show, and she unfortunately had to go back from lunch, and she just texted me saying she couldn't stay on the line, but she wanted to share with the group. And maybe we'll get more detail from her. Maybe we'll have a chance tomorrow. But uh, but she had shared with me and texted that she had called into the show to share that uh, – before uh, the intensive and for 25 years, whenever she would fly, she would have to take a Xanax or something to calm her down to be able to fly. And uh, uh, even then her flights were white knuckle experiences. And uh, she came out of the intensive, of course, flying back home uh, to uh, to the uh, Chicago area. And uh, she shared that she got to the airport and uh, had the thought of Xanax. It's like, I don't need that. Got on the plane. First time in 25 years, got on the plane and actually hit some turbulent weather. She said, that would have been absolute white knuckle. And I'd have been reaching in my purse. And she said, I just sat there and breathed and asked Rooker for support. It was perfectly fine. And then she said the second flight, she had to stop over. She said on the second flight, it was so turbulent uh, that they actually, the captain actually came on and had them stop beverage service. So she said it was pretty, pretty wild. And she said, no fear, no fear at all. Just, and, and you know, the, the changes in her uh, personal code evaluation scores on fear were just awesome. And uh, she had this, like, instant feedback, you know, here I am for 25 years, I've never flown, and I get on a plane, and it's like, even when there's turbulence, it's no big deal. So it's pretty cool to watch how people make those kind of shifts and uh, pre and post doing their work. It's, it's just... Um, it fills my heart with gratitude. Thank you, everybody, for doing your work and 
And thank you, Dr. Tim, for the work you do with people there and keeping that support group going and moving through the mountains that uh, that you've been supporting people doing. That's just awesome. Well, and I, I, thank you. Uh, it's appreciated. It's it's wonderful to be on the team. And I wanted to say that listening to um, um, Rex yesterday, and and he was talking about, you know, he's been teaching the work for a long time and applying it to himself, and yet he's having issues with his own son. And um, I just wanted to reinforce for people that there are people who, on a regular basis, come into the support group have never been exposed to anything like this before and in a week or two or a month's time they're reporting well the old me versus the new me yeah. tremendous yeah. amounts of work can be done um, you know even if you can't afford to go to the intensive which is highly recommended for anybody who can make that happen. But even if you can't, you can start your own support group or go to one that's local and start seeing fabulous results in a relatively short period of time or an amazingly short period of time if you're lucky and willing. If you have that willingness to look at it and question everything you've been taught so far about how everybody else is causing your pain and sadness, then magical things can happen. That's for sure, and it's always uh, such a blessing to be part of those uh, those shifts and changes occurring. So sometimes overwhelming in the gratitude for having uh, having to get to play like this in the universe and watch the light come on in people's eyes. It's just awesome. Yeah. We had a talk to a couple of folks. Uh, just a little bit ago this morning, you know, with the, the two intensives we did back-to-back, it was kind of hard to catch up after that first intensive. So now that we've got a few days to wind down, I've been just touching in with some of those folks. And one uh, one lady that I was talking to, and she's been in a relationship for a few months, and and uh, her, her words were, I have never experienced such freedom of expression and lightness in my life. And, uh, and there was a couple that were there, the gentleman and the couple had taken uh, eight pounds off in the nine days at the intensive, and he's taken another two and a half off in the 12 days since then. So he's just delighted and uh, shifting and changing the whole internal structure, the whole internal architecture of his own mind. And so it's awesome to be on the team to support each person who's, uh, who's willing to take the bold step to move into doing your work. Uh, we are going to be in Jacksonville. Starting the first Sunday of May, we'll be in uh, Jacksonville at Unity Church. And, of course, our intensive season food fund forgiveness and work project starts on the 12th of July. So come and play with us. We look forward to supporting you. We hold you in a blessing. Bring a stranger with you to the show tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice and his wife, Jeannie, who present the internal Aramaic process of forgiveness. Michael and Jeannie are here every Monday through Friday on Earth Angels Radio. For more on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. That's www.whyagain.com. A-G-A-I-N dot com.